Hey guys, thanks for stopping by my video today. I felt like I was kind of overdue for a chit chat with you guys and there have definitely been a couple of things that have been floating around my empty head of mine that I wanted to kind of chat with you guys about. But I realized as I was kind of getting ready, I just wanted to talk about products. I wanted to talk about makeup, I wanted to talk about hair, skincare, body care. I've got a ton of products that I'm just, they're not necessarily my favorites, but they're things that I have really been enjoying. And I just wanted to kind of chat with you about them. Some of them might wind up making into a, making it into a favorites video, which I definitely want to do again. Um, but as you can see, I still kind of have Easter decorations up. Those are some colored Easter eggs and there's like bunnies hanging back there. I haven't had a lot of time lately. And so I'll worry about favorites later. I do though, like I said, want to just chat with you about products and so I'm gonna start with makeup I was kind of gonna be random about it but I'm gonna start with makeup because I have a funny feeling after I talk long enough I'm gonna wind up cutting the video off and doing hair body and skincare um, in a separate video just so that I don't take up your entire life because um, that's selfish but uh, we'll kind of see how it goes so uh, stay tuned I have no idea where the video is going to end up but we're definitely gonna start talking about makeup also this is gonna be kind of generally everything but Sephora and that was kind of my other point we've all been talking about Sephora so much lately because of the VIB sale some of my items I will say you could get at Sephora but I didn't make a point to talk about them in any of my previous uh, both recent uh, Sephora videos because I did get them out of their places like the drugstore Ulta um, some came from Nordstrom uh, I think that's it. Oh, and Kohl's. I did some makeup shopping at Kohl's as well. So just because we're on kind of like a Sephora overload, uh, I'm going to kind of talk about some of those other places. Mostly drugstore, which is nice because it's much more affordable, but then a couple other, I couldn't help it. I have to talk about a couple other things I got. So let's start talking about some makeup. Uh, so I'm going to start right off the bat with something that Sephora also sells. Um, but I just wanted to highlight during the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty sale, I got six um, of the Anastasia Brow Wizzes. I had really been staying away from her. I use the shade Taupe. There is no other shade like it. There is no other application like it. I know that Benefit makes the, um, I forget what they call it. It's not the Gimme Brow, but their pencil. They've got their equivalent pre uh, pencil and everybody raves about it. I can't stand the packaging. It's much too kitschy and quite frankly silly. I, I just, I don't like it. So I love the Anastasia. It was 50% off. It's equivalent to what I would pay for the L'Oreal Brow Stylist, which is what I was using from the drugstore, which I don't love as much. And so I bought six, which I had to split up into three orders because I couldn't believe I was not a platinum member. And so therefore I had to spend 50 bucks in order to get like the free shipping. Um, and plus it was a limited two. And so I wound up spending way more than I intended in order to save money on my brow products. But I absolutely love the Anastasia Brow Wiz. And if I can get it on sale, I have no idea how long six is gonna last. Probably only six months, you go through them so fast. But, uh, but I was happy to be able to do that and hoard them. And so I hope if you were looking for a taupe uh, brow wiz during the Ulta sale, hopefully that they weren't sold out because then you'll be mad at me because it looks like I took them all. Okay, um, uh, also, you know, honestly, this is just such a random mess, so I'm just gonna kind of go through it. Oh, something else I got from Ulta, which, oh my God, I'm so excited about. So this is by Laura Geller. This is her, um, what do they call them? The Baked Gelato Swirl Illuminators. Now, everybody loves Gilded Honey. That is the gold tinted one. I actually also have that one um, because everybody on YouTube raved about it and I wanted to be a part of the club, so I got it. And what I learned, I, based on my own personal skin tone, uh, silver ones, silver highlighters don't look good on me and the gold highlighters don't look good on me, even though I've got kind of a golden undertone. I don't know, maybe it's too like matchy-matchy or something. Never looks good. There has never really been a happy medium. Becca makes a rose gold. It's way too dark. This is the peach flavor, peach flavored, peach tinted um, illuminator from Laura Geller and it is, there's nothing else like it. I have not found another highlighter that is in a similar shade to that. Plus, I love that it's not obnoxious. I bet if you wet it down with like Fix Plus, you could get it to, to pull pretty strong, but you know, I don't like that. And so I haven't picked up anything else since I started using this. I didn't even know they made a peach. I didn't even know I wanted a peach. Officially, it's called Peach Glow. Hmm, how convenient is that? But I didn't even know that that was something that 
existed or that I needed, but it is officially my most favorite highlighter. I am wearing it today. It's a little bit stronger than I usually do, but I think it's because it's not such a contrast to my skin tone. I think that's why I like it. Also from Ulta, this was also during their 21 day sale. Um, this is by Bare Minerals. This is the Gen Nude uh, Liquid Lipstick, and I have the shade Infamous. I'm actually wearing it now. Let me say this. It's a very, it's a very comfortable, um, it reminds me of the liquid lipsticks from Revlon. They're the Ultra HD, I think is what they're called. Um, so they're kind of like a, a NYX also makes kind of like a creamy matte lip, um, liquid lipstick. Um, I'm not a fan of the shade. Like I said, it is what I'm wearing right now. I am not a fan of the shade. It's way too pink for me. It has a very nice smell. It almost smells like a milkshake or something. I also don't find that these liquid lipsticks are opaque enough. Um, I feel like they're a little bit sheer, which is weird for a liquid lipstick, but I wanted to wear it for the purpose of the video today to show you. But the reason I love, in case you're looking at my lips going, what's the matter with you? That looks fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Well, as pink as it was, I then topped it with a Jouer lip topper. I forget who I heard talking about it. Someone was talking about, oh, well, a number of people were talking about it. But this is the lip topper in Skinny Dip. And that's literally what it is. It is like a very sheer, just kind of lip topper. It's not a gloss, though, which is so fascinating. I mocked lip toppers before. Skinny Dip is kind of, um, it's kind of a, it's just kind of a, a, pe a peachy goldish. <laughs> um, it actually kind of looks a little bit like my uh, illuminator there. But when I placed it on top of the liquid lipstick, which was still dry, I mean, it's obviously not like a creamy, well, it's kind of like a creamy matte, um, but it not only gave me some moisture, but kind of toned down the color a little bit. And now I absolutely love the combination. So I was ready to all hate on the Gen Nude uh, liquid lipstick itself. Now I actually really like it, provided you give it a little bit of a chopper. Um, something else I got from Ulta. This is from NYX. Um, this is officially the Pro Foundation Mixer. This is the white shade. So clearly I'm going to use it to lighten up um, a foundation that I have that is too dark. I haven't had to use it yet because I am pretty pale still. <laughs> we are still coming off of winter, not a lot of spring yet. And so I don't really tan that much anyway. And I honestly, I can't be bothered. This is the skin tone I was born with. And so I'll, I'll change the colors on my face and such in other ways with makeup, but to go after my whole body, I don't have the patience. So what I found though, and I think I've talked about this before, especially in drugstore foundations, in order to get the olive undertone, they wind up being dark. It's as if pale skin people or light skin people can't have olive undertones. Um, and so this will at least in my frustration with in particular drugstore foundations, which have a limited shade range in comparison to some of the higher end ones. Um, I figured this might be helpful. This might help me adapt to some of the drugstore foundations. I haven't used it yet, but I'm, I feel very safe knowing that I have it that way in case I come across a foundation because I've got some summer shades. I do darken a little bit in the summer, um, but maybe during that transition period where I'm not quite that dark yet. P.S. I do not actually get dark. That is, that is false advertising right there. But um, in the interim, until I'm as dark as I get personally, um, I might need to tone down some of the darker shades of foundation that I already have, which are both high-end and drugstore, but that I have reserved for the summertime. So I'm hoping that works out well. I've said before though, I hate mixing. So, but in order to have the right shade, I hate having the wrong foundation shade on much more than I hate mixing foundation. So I will have to make the sacrifice. Um, something else that I got from Ulta is by Maybelline. Everybody's been talking about this already, but I just wanted to mention it. This is the Master Chrome Highlighter. So this is a pink toned one. So remember I said I don't like the silver and the gold doesn't always seem to play off on my skin very well. So this now is actually a pink toned highlighter. Which it's actually, it's a little, it's a little pinky peach. And now that I'm putting it next to the, to the illuminator, they look surprisingly similar. Here's the one from Maybelline and then here's the one from Laura Geller. Um, something about this one doesn't play as well on my skin as the new illuminator, illuminator does, but they are very close. So if you are on a budget and if you have a similar skin tone to me or you don't want to go silver or gold, this is a beautiful highlighter from the drugstore. What I like about it though is yes, you can 
what does they say go big or go home you can go very big with this amount of highlighter but you also can apply it with a very light hand and it will still show up subtly enough it's not a subtle highlighter but you can get it to favor being subtle if you are very gentle in your blush that would probably be like if you don't want like a lot of highlighter that would be a good highlighter to use like with a fan brush um, as your highlighter brush because that picks up minimal product see if you can even get one that's uh, a natural bristle brush so that it holds on to some of the pigment too so that it applies ever so little bit if you are concerned about having too much of a glow which you know I am um, okay oh this was cool so um, I think it was Tati who was talking about um, the shadow palettes by Models Own. And so, again, during, was it during the 21 days? I don't remember, but it was still pre-platinum status, which I am now, thank goodness. But before my platinum status, I was still perpetually trying to fill my cart with things so that I didn't have to pay shipping. I, like, refuse to pay shipping anywhere for anything. I, I think now in today's day and age, you should cover the shipping. I should not have to pay the shipping. Also, you need to, like, step up. That being said, the model's own palettes, and I have two of them, she got me interested when she started talking about the Barely There shadow palette, um, which I am wearing. I'm going to get rid of the brush because it comes with a little brush. I haven't used it. Um, this is just a very beautiful, light to somewhat dark, um, neutral with some browns and purples and pinks palette and the pigment on them is actually really really nice i am wearing most of this palette on my eyes today i think i touched the other palette that i'm going to show you in a second i think i touched that um just a little bit but just to show you some of the shimmers the shimmers are not glittery i like that the the mattes are not really very splotchy you know they they, they don't get patchy in their application the only thing i will say is that they are not as dark as they look in the palette. So this one, for example, right here is like a really rich, dark chocolate brown. And that's the one that I've swatched here. I feel like it should still be more pigmented, pigmented than that. Um, like it doesn't quite step up to, for example, Anastasia uh, has a fudge shadow, which I absolutely live for. That would be an affordable cousin to it because it's not a dupe because it's not really as dark but it'd be a nice like relative to it so here's well let me show you the other one the other one that i have is called supernatural so we went with a very very like um neutral palette and then this one went a little bit deeper this green shade in the middle um just completely caught my attention because it's just it's oh it's so pretty now that one um that one swatches out very nicely, um, but maybe because it is so dark. Um, and then there's some really pretty, like, silvery taupes, um, which I don't generally have a lot of, or or very... I oh, know I lost it. I don't tend to have, like, taupey shadows very much, because I tend to go, like, kind of warmer or purpler. Um, but I thought this was a nice way to get some really good shadows. She talks so highly of them, and I do happen to agree. Um, so again, they, um, they're about $15 a palette. I actually got them when they were buy one, get one half off. So basically, I got both of them for like 20 bucks. So that makes it $10 a palette. That is ridiculously worth it. So worth it. I mean, there are definitely some higher-end shadow palettes that... I sometimes feel like they don't really, um, that they don't really swatch out very well. They don't really hold their pigment. Here's what I will say about this, because at the end of the day, still, Anastasia is my absolute favorite, um, shadows, especially the single shadows. I feel like when you apply them, the color remains, yet you can still blend them in seamlessly, and that's kind of what I look for. These, now I mentioned I'm wearing them on my eyes right now. When I was initially applying the shadows I was like where is the pigment and I was a little bit frustrated but when I went in and layered it with same shade but kind of layered like went in for like a second coat almost that is how I was able to get the intensity of the pigment that I have right now I went into another room away from the bright lights after I had applied them and I was like oh my gosh that is so much eye makeup what happened it doesn't on the first round, I feel like it doesn't apply as much pigment as the as the pan represents that it should. But if you play with it, you can get it to step up. So if you've got a little bit more time 
and perhaps a little bit less money, then those are some really, really awesome palettes. They are completely affordable and, and worth it in that regard. Also, if you don't want to spend a lot of money on shadow and you're willing to put the time in, then absolutely go for those. So I don't really know much about the rest of the brand, but now I'm kind of intrigued because I thought... Um, I thought that, like I said, I thought those were really good shadows. I do have something else from them, though, which then is what caused me trouble later on. I picked up the Sculpt and Glow bronzer. This is a um, kind of like a creamy bronzer. Officially, it's the Sculpt and Glow Cream to Powder Bronzer. This is the shade Deep Six, Deep Glow, Deep Glow number six. So this, there's two shades. The other one is lighter, and it's a little bit peachier. Like, not oranger, but it's just a little bit, the little bit, um, not quite as cool. I like this one because it's almost like red undertoned, um, which I really feel like is what the sun does to us. I mean, I do enjoy a warmer bronzer every once and again, but at the same time, a red undertone bronzer can be really nice because that's what the sun does to you. It pinkens up your skin. And so I have a thumb left. <laughs> So let me swatch this. So I used, um, or I have used a stippling brush to apply this. Um, you can also use a beauty sponge, which I don't always have handy and available, um, which is why the stippling brush worked very nicely. I'm not like a super huge fan of cream contouring. I have very large pores, and although I do smooth them out, for some reason, the cream pro like the cream bronzers on top of foundation and even the contours, they they highlight my pores, and I'm I'm not even really sure why. I've I'm still experimenting with kind of how to apply them with my own personal skin texture. Um, I def you definitely if you're using a stippling brush, you definitely need to actually stipple. Like I've seen. Um, I guess Jaclyn Hill, because she's got very beautiful skin, she can kind of um, swirl on a cream a cream bronzer um, with a brush and it winds up looking okay. For me, like I said, with a little bit of the texture on my skin and kind of the size of my pores as well, the cream bronzer doesn't seem to sit. I don't know if it's because it's sitting on top of foundation as well and then possibly some concealer. It might just be too much cream on top of cream, but... Um, as far as a cream to powder bronzer, this one by Models Own is actually really nice. And it was pretty affordable too. I think normally priced, it was about $12.99. I did get it on like some kind of sale. I don't know if I used points or, uh, you know, I had a coupon or whatever. Um, so because of that, that was what made me jump into that and want to give that a try. And I definitely really enjoyed that. So when I said that that started giving me trouble, that was because... I was like, oh, so I'm using this now cream bronzer. I don't usually use, I don't even know if I have many other cream bronzers to begin with. I've got like maybe a contour stick and stuff, but I definitely don't have a lot in my collection. So I think I mentioned I just turned 40 in January and I received some very generous gift certificates um, for my birthday and I decided I wanted to buy impactual things. Like I didn't just want to buy a whole collection of stuff. Like I wanted to buy stuff that I would remember as a representative of this particularly non-monumental birthday, okay? So I had tried that and then I was like, well... So, and this is where my Nordstrom shopping came in. I, I got the Chanel, Tan de Chanel bronzer. And that's so pretty. I love it. So, it, you know, and honestly, back in the, back in the day, before we, when we would talk about the Chanel, Tan de, uh, what do they call it officially? Tan de Chanel, when the Soleil Tan de Chanel. When we would talk about it before, everyone was like, "Oh my gosh, it's so expensive! It's so expensive!" It was fifty dollars. I mean, we're we're talking about highlighters, which we use even less of. Becca's are like thirty-eight dollars now. We've got Marc Jacobs in the mix, and he's got shadow palette, you know, and and shadow palettes in general are fifty dollars. This, I, I don't really think. I don't really think we can classify this as like super duper expensive anymore. And so in the same way, this applies a little bit smoother than the one by Model Zone that I just showed you. Um, but again, I am still kind of learning how to, um, how to just get it to apply well on my skin. Like I know how to apply it, but I need it to work with my skin. So this one, just by comparison, it, it plays a little bit warmer, um, just a hair, a little bit warmer than the one by Models Own. 
which I kind of like, because if I'm going to have two and I'm going to enjoy using them, maybe I'll wind up using it a lot in the summer. Um, I like that they're not exactly the same shade. But I wanted to know what all the fuss was about. I wanted to be a part of the club. I wanted to be a cool girl who was like, oh yes, the, so the, the Chanel Soleil Ten de Chanel, of course. I have that. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, I don't like to be left out. That's, what is that, Folo? Fear, Fablo. Fear of being left out. That's me. I don't like to be left out. And so now I'm in the club. Um, and so, but I will always remember that I bought that as a result of my friends and family for my 40th birthday. And so uh, I, I just, I don't know. I like when things work out like that. Okay, a couple other things that I got from Nordstrom. We got a couple MAC products, which actually you can get at Ulta now. But you can't get everything at Ulta. I know you can get most things at Nordstrom. So I bought the pressed blotting powder. Risa Does Makeup. Um, who is a phenomenal um, makeup artist and YouTuber as well, uh, has similar skin to me where she says that um, she does break out and she does have... I have combo to oily skin and I, I think she describes herself as very oily. Um, I don't think it matters. Once you have oily skin, you have oily skin. Well, she raved about this blotting powder. It's just a sheer, looks white in the pan, um, doesn't show up on your face blotting powder. So I keep this in my makeup case and I take this with me everywhere. And uh, I don't always go in straight with the blotting powder. I will use some blotting papers first um, just because you don't want to really create a paste with all of the oil on the surface of your skin. Uh, you want to, to get some of that off before you wind up blotting on top of it. Um, I think I've mentioned before that my favorite lipsticks ever are the MAC Cream Sheens, and apparently there were some pretty ones that I didn't own yet. Do I have, like, green shadow on my nose? Because I still have it on my finger, and it's entirely possible it's going to hit my nose before the end of this video. Um, so I picked up Peach Blossom, which is a really pretty... Um, I've run out of places to swatch, which is a really pretty, it's a, it's a peachy sort of, oh, nope, that didn't work. <laughs> Hi, I am a professional YouTuber, and I don't know how to swatch lipstick. So, you know, let's put it there. There we go. So it's a really pretty, I have to do that over, that was ridiculous. So I got this one here, it's called Peach Blossom. It's a really pretty, um, it pulls more pink, but it's not like a totally 100 pink. 100 pink, 100% 100 pink. Um, it has a little bit, it's not 100%, I wanna say matte, cause it's shiny, but it's not, it's got like a little, a little sheen to it, a little, a little shimmer, not a frost, but a little shimmer. And alone, it is so fabulous just to wear on its own. It will complement any makeup colors that you have on your face. You can put it on blindfolded or without a mirror because it's a cream sheen and they are very friendly like that. I also got Japanese Maple, which is a very pretty pale pink, um, but not like you look dead pale pink. Um, and it doesn't, uh, this is as light as I can go so that it doesn't wash me out. Um, I think it's MAC Myth. It makes me look like I just overreached my foundation and I've completely like wh uh, whited out my entire um, pinkiness to my lip. I have historically always loved kind of peach-based um, lipsticks, but my lips really are pink. Like their natural undertone is kind of a pink and I've been learning and working with using and favoring now some pinker toned, pinker based uh, lip colors. And so that was why I apparently did not own them. That must have been during my peach phase. Um, another lipstick that I picked up, uh, this came from Kohl's. I love the Lorac Alter Ego lipstick. <laughs> um, but I love their matte ones and I have like five or six of those. I didn't have any of the normal, natural, just kind of creamy lipsticks. So I picked up this shade called Beach Babe. Um, it also is pinky, big surprise, but it's got, it's got a little bit of kind of a mauve undertone. And then it's up, clearly, as you can see, it's a little bit darker, it's a little bit richer, not quite as, I don't wanna say slippery as the cream sheens. The cream sheens are not slippery, but they are definitely silky. This one has a little bit more, a little bit more thickness to it. Plus, I love the way they smell. They smell like a cupcake. I'm not quite sure that's a very wise thing when someone is trying to watch what they weigh, but it smells like a cupcake and I absolutely love it. Something else that I picked up at Kohl's, this I carry with me in my uh, handbag all the time too, specifically because it's so light. This is by um, The Balm. This is called Balm Beach. I love their names. 
They're very, they're very cute. This is just a long wearing blush. It has a really nice mirror, but this is just kind of a, it's a little, this is basically like a soft pink blush. And again, it's one of those colors that can kind of complement kind of any, um, any eye look that you've, any kind of makeup themed color look that you have going on. Um, like I said, I picked it up. Honestly, specifically, I never had one of their blushes before, so I wanted to try it. But also, curiously, I had never tried it before, but then also, like I said, I wanted something that was going to be uh, travel friendly. So it's right here. It's a very pale, I'm running out of swatches, places to swatch things. It's a very pale, just kind of neutral sort of pink. Many times throughout the day with my slightly oily skin, my blush, even if it's long wearing, high quality, whatever, it tends to kind of rub off a little bit. So does my foundation, sometimes a little bit too, like around my nose or like when I blow my nose. Did you say I almost put green eyeshadow on my nose right there? <laughs> I saved it though, I saved it. So when I go in and apply a little bit of extra concealer or I try to just kind of touch up throughout the day, sometimes I will need a blush in order to kind of balance myself out. Okay, I picked up another concealer. I'm kind of like into concealers right now because the reality is this, they all crease. I have like two lines under each eye significant enough. And I think that comes from my bitch resting face, which I like own the market on, which is also why I've got this little crevice between my brows right now. Um, there is no amount of makeup that can deal with trying to disguise that or, or pore smoothing primer or filler. The only thing left would be Botox. I'm not there yet. I also heard that it will change your facial expressions or your inability to make facial expressions. And so I'm definitely very afraid of it, but give me a little bit more time and development of this like crevice that I have there that I'm definitely going to start researching Botox. So anyway, I'm kind of on like a concealer kick. By the way, have you noticed that all concealers oxidize? And I think in the same way when we complain about some foundations that oxidize, those are typically the longer wearing ones, which are typically thicker, like the Urban Decay All Nighter is notorious for oxidizing. So there must be something in the thickening agent of whether it be concealers or long wearing foundations that cause them to oxidize. You want to know why I know this? Because when I was decluttering my entire concealer collection, I literally swatched like, had to be like 15 of them on my arm. And after like 10 or 15 minutes, they all were like three shades darker. It wasn't even twice as dark. They had all darkened up and it got me to thinking. And then I thought about the foundations that do that too. So there's something about concealers. That being said, I now have tried the Double Wear, the one by Estee Lauder Double Wear Concealer. I happen to be wearing that today also. Um, probably my most favorite concealer to date. I am still trying out the one by Laura Mercier. I will let you know how that compares up. Um, I have given up now on my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer, which I had been enjoying for many years, but the shade range sucks. And the one that comes closest and, and the really the only one that I can use is custard and it is exactly my skin tone. So I definitely do want uh, an under eye concealer that's one, at least one shade lighter. If I go, sh if I go lighter in the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer, it goes very pink. I don't know. I don't, there's nothing lighter in the yellow. Cust uh, custard is, um, and it's olive toned, it's yellow toned. And so going anything lighter than that and I immediately look pink. Oh, it's awful. I've tried it. And so the, uh, the ones by Estee Lauder, they are in comparison to shape tape. I like it better. One, I like the shade range again, better with the, with the Estee Lauder double wear. It is a hair thinner than the Tarte shape tape. And so, I mean, I, I'll still use it. I still have it. I, you know, uh, but there are just, it's just, it, blends in a little bit better and it blends in a little bit easier. And I am finding that with the two significant lines that I have under my eyes, if you're using a slightly thinner concealer, it is much less likely to get stuck in there. So, um, yeah, I, when, when like people on YouTube or bloggers or whoever are describing concealers that really don't, um, that don't crease, uh, that makes me laugh because uh, you're not smiling enough if you don't have any creasing because the reason your eyes crease not only is because of age, but it's because you smile. And if you're not, if you're not creasing at all, that means you're not smiling. And so, I don't know, it just seems impossible, impossible to me that unless it was like a glue or solid, 
like paint on a wall that completely, completely dried, it just seems impossible that it doesn't crease. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just something I get to experience. Um, couple other things. I picked up from Fla, oh no, I have a, I have quite a few. Okay, I picked up a couple products from Flower Beauty. I already have one of the blushes. Um, I have the peach one, whose name escapes me right now. Uh, they call them the flower pots. This is Sweet Pea. This is actually, I was thinking it was going to be like pink. It's actually like pinky mauve. There's definitely like a mauve undertone to it. It looks like the ones from Milani. Um, but I don't care because I don't, I don't even think it was intentional. It looks like, but like I said, it looks like the ones from Milani. They're very nicely pigmented. They blend very well. They are completely 100% matte. They remind me a little bit of the blushes from Makeup Geek. Um, but this gives you the opportunity to look at them in store prior to getting them. And I think that probably came from Walmart. Um, I also picked up some of the Her... Her? Oh yeah, that's the one by Drew Barrymore. Well, whatever. I also picked up um, some of the matte, uh, some of the lipsticks. One of them is the matte and one of them is a cream. So I got the matte in what they call Naked Blush. Um, this reminds me a lot of the Maybelline um, creamy matte lipsticks that came out a little while ago. This one is pretty... It's not really naked. It's got quite a bit more color to it. I Again, I'm not a fan of a very pink lip, um, but maybe if I use the Jouer on top of it, the lip topper, maybe that'll kind of dumb it down a little bit. And this one is called um, Bear Pout. Uh, this one looks a little bit peachier. And honestly, it... It's a little bit too light for my lips. I don't know. I'm not thrilled with the shade. They're calling them nudes and nakeds and, and not really. They seem like really nice formulas though. Um, the creamy one is just that. It's creamy. It's a little bit slippery. It's not a it's not a thick creamy lipstick, but I mean, everything cannot be the same and everything cannot be designed to Gina's specific preferences. So they're a great lipstick. Um, pretty opaque actually which was kind of nice i mean if you're gonna put lipstick on you want you want to be able to see it so um and they were pretty affordable less than ten dollars for sure they might have even been six dollars so that's really nice and i'm going to add just because everybody else is talking about them um these are by l'oreal they are officially called i forget now the colorish shine lipsticks I love the packaging. The packaging is beautiful, but you know I generally don't care about packaging. Um, I have three shades that I really like. My favorite is probably Glossy Fawn, which uh, is kind of like a is a peachy brownie nude, which again you can kind of wear with anything. This one is like a throw in your bag when you don't really know what's going on, and it'll it'll give you no trouble. You'll be able to use it, no questions asked. Um, another one that's pretty pretty nice. Uh, this is called Shining Peach. I think I picked this one up because they didn't have Glossy Fawn. Um, and it's a little bit, it's a little bit brighter. Um, works well with the pink tone of my lip. Um, I think it could pull a little bit too light. So if you've got darker skin of any kind, even medium, medium tone skin, that might not play off very well. It's pretty pale. My favorite though is Dazzling Doe because it's unlike anything else. It's almost... Yeah, I don't know. It's almost gray, but in a good way. It's like a warm gray. I don't know. I, I can't explain it, but I definitely don't have anything else like it ever in my collection, whether I decluttered or not. Um, and these are nice. They have darker shades. I refuse to wear them because I'm not wearing a darker shade that is slippery, um, which could potentially wind up all over my face because my hair is always blowing in my on my mouth and, and just, I'm a klutz. And so I'll touch my, see, I already talked about how I was going to touch my nose. Um, but I'm not wearing a darker shade of lipstick that isn't going to stay put like cement. At least if it's a matte. It doesn't have to be a liquid lipstick, but at least if it's a matte lipstick, then it will stay and that makes me much more comfortable. I also can't be comfortable if I'm wearing a darker shade that's slippery. The last thing I got were two more blushes. Um, these are from Milani. I really love these. Uh, Milani, of course, made those, um, those large pan blushes that had the rose on the front. I've got a couple of those. Um, this is called Color Harmony. I have the shades Coral, oh geez, oh, I, 
didn't want to open. I have the shade Coral Beams, and typically I will use it and swirl all over, but then you can totally delve into this as a highlighter. You can even use this shade right here as a, as a very slight contrasting bronzer. Um, I think that's pretty genius. I love that. And I also have the shade uh, Berry Rays, which I think is really pretty too. It's called Berry, but I think only because this darkest shade here. Um, but again, this, is, this shade here makes a gorgeous highlight. Let me just show you um, what it looks like all together. Oh, I did that on the wrong finger. Let me show you what it looks like all together. So that's kind of the shades um, right there all together. And then if you just take the highlighter, it, it pulls a hair. It's like a, it's like the way we uh, highlight underneath our eyes, um, where you just go one to two shades lighter. Well, this kind of does that when it comes to using it just as a highlighter. Are you gonna wanna do that all the time? Not necessarily, but in a pinch, if you're in a rush, you can pull out one compact and kind of tackle a couple different things. Plus, you can use the individual shades, whether you want to highlight the inner corner of your eye or, you know, dab on a little bit. It's a lid shade, just kind of brighten, the, brighten your face up just a little bit. It's a really nice compact to be in a rush, which I am always in. Yet when I do my eye makeup, I use like eight different shadows. So I don't know, who could tell? All right, so I am definitely going to include hair, skin, and body in a separate video because this one's already too long. So um, what have you been finding at the drugstore lately? Is there something that I should pick up? Or what do you think about any of the products that I mentioned so far, even though some of them, or not all of them, were from the drugstore, but predominantly? Um, please tell me your thoughts. Um, give me some recommendations. Also, of course, as always, let me know anything that you would like to see in the future, any kind of videos that you want me to do or anything you want me to try out. Um, I should mention I am on Instagram. I'm also on Twitter, but I'm definitely on Instagram quite a bit more. So um, I will leave those, uh, I'll leave that link in the description box below. I will leave a list of everything that I talked about. Um, thank you so much for spending your time with me. I hope you have a good rest of the day and I will see you in my next video. Thanks. Oh, I love.